the NTSB has released its preliminary report to this month's deadly plane crash in Brock County. Details on the minutes leading up to that crash. And the NAACP is demanding a review of the Sun Prairie School District while leaders say a middle school homework assignment is part of a racist curriculum. Plus, President Biden's $1.9 trillion COVID relief package is on its way to the Senate. How Wisconsin lawmakers are reacting after the early morning vote. This is News 3 Now at 6. We start with breaking news tonight. A third coronavirus vaccine will soon hit the market in the U.S. Within the past hour, the FDA approved Johnson & Johnson's one-dose shot for emergency use. Distribution of the vaccine, which can be stored in a regular refrigerator, could be underway as soon as Monday. The FDA confirms that J&J's vaccine is somewhat less effective than Moderna and Pfizer's shots overall, but it showed 85% efficacy against severe illness and complete protection against COVID-19 deaths 28 days after after getting the shot. We're learning more about this month's deadly plane crash in Janesville as the National Transportation Safety Board released its preliminary report just this morning. Adam Duxter joins us now with the moments that led up to that crash. Adam. Well, the NTSB says just minutes after taking off from the Southern Wisconsin Regional Airport, the plane reported engine troubles and was headed downward at an estimated 80 degree angle. According to the report, the plane departed from Appleton International Airport at 634 on February 16th and landed in Janesville at 715 to get fuel. The plane was then headed to Florida to receive maintenance on its landing gear. In two months, two hours after landing in Janesville, the plane was back in the sky before crashing near the airport just five minutes later. Less than 80 seconds after takeoff clearance, the report says one of the pilots said they wanted to circle back and work through some engine issues. Air traffic control acknowledged the request and the pilot replied, and that was the last radio communication received from the plane. Two pilots in the crash were later ID'd as 25-year-old Tanner Byholm and 26-year-old Remington Vinny. A full NTSB report is expected to take between 12 and and 24 months. Tonight on News 3 Now at 10, we'll hear from a fellow pilot who knew Remington Vinny well. And we'll have her reflections on Vinny's life, friendship, and legacy in the world of Wisconsin aviation during tonight's 10 o'clock newscast. All right, thank you so much, Adam. Developing tonight, the NAACP of Dane County is demanding a review of the Sun Prairie School District after a middle school homework assignment asked students to imagine they were punishing slaves. In a statement, the NAACP's Dane County chapter says it's outraged by the education failures the incident has exposed and is asking the district to complete a thorough investigation on why the lesson was selected. It's also demanding that the Department of Public Instruction conduct a compliance audit of the district. We spoke with a black Patrick Marsh sixth grade student and his mother earlier this month about that online assignment and asked students how they would punish a slave who's disrespecting their master. At the time, the Sun Prairie Area School District called the assignment a grave error in judgment. District leaders also apologized at a board meeting and committed to developing an anti-racist instructional framework. Beloit police are investigating after a 20-year-old man arrived at a hospital with gunshot wounds. They say he showed up at the Beloit Memorial Hospital ER around midnight. Anyone with information should contact Beloit police. One person is dead after a two-car crash in Juneau County. It happened around 7 o'clock this morning on State Highway 58 in Germantown German Township. Officials say people in another car suffered non-life-threatening injuries. The crash is under investigation. A man is dead in Sun Prairie after crashing into Anna's Pizzeria on West Main Street. Police say the crash happened around 6.45 this morning. A pickup truck was found inside that restaurant. The driver was taken to a local hospital where he later died. That crash is under investigation, but police say the driver was likely suffering a significant medical event. Let's get a look at your first warm weather with Dana Fulton. We got a lot of sun today, Dana. We really did. A lot of sun and some very comfortable temperatures this afternoon, so I know a lot of people are outside enjoying that for your Saturday. We officially hit 46 degrees in Madison, so quite a bit above average for afternoon highs and for our overnight lows. Not a record-breaking day, but still very pleasant. Sunset was just a little bit ago. We had some really nice pink hues across the sky. We've already dropped a bit at 40 degrees currently in Madison with our breeze coming in from the south-southeast at about 5.
5 miles per hour. 39 in Janesville, 36 in Platteville right now, and about 39 in Mineral Point. Now, our snowpack decreasing quite a bit over the last several days. Tonight, we're looking at the chance for some light freezing drizzle to mix in. Could mix with some light rain tomorrow. That moisture is just going to continue to eat away at the snow. Doesn't look like any of that will be mixing with much snow for us in southern Wisconsin. Overall, the week ahead includes many more mild days, but we will take a closer look at your full 10 day in just a few minutes, Amanda. All right, thank you, Dana. The program that allows downtown Madison restaurants to expand outdoor dining capabilities has been extended. Gabriella Becerra is on the Capitol Square to explain why the city is continuing it for a second year. Gabby. Amanda, Pinckney Street is a perfect example of restaurants taking advantage of the city's streetery restaurant relief program. You have Lucille, Settle Down Tavern, and Merchant all expanding their dining into the street, helping them survive this pandemic. Now until April 2022, the city will be allowing restaurants to take up parking spots and alleyways for outdoor dining in the pandemic. Settle Down Tavern has participated in the streetery program since it started last May, but they were forced to get creative when the temperature dropped this winter. When it's zero degrees, when it's 20 degrees, or even when it's negative 10, we got to create something that feels like a good time. So if you look at what people do for tailgates, for the Badgers or for the Packers, people sit outside for hours and drink and eat. It's not like this is new to Wisconsinites. So we just created that environment. Settle Down Tavern started the Tundra Club, a reward program for customers who brave the cold to eat at their restaurant. And Settle Down Tavern and other participating restaurants hope to see this program stay even past its expiration date in 2022. And the city would also like to see more restaurants outside of the downtown area participate in this program as well. So they'll be doing some outreach into some surrounding neighborhoods. Gabriella Becerra reporting downtown tonight. Thank you so much, Gabby. President Biden is calling on the U.S. Senate to pass his $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill immediately. The House approved the aid package early this morning. We have no time to waste. If we act now decisively, quickly and boldly, we can finally get ahead of this virus. We can finally get our economy moving again. And the people of this country have suffered far too much for too long. We need to relieve that suffering. The American Rescue Plan does just that. It relieves the suffering, and it's time to act. The bill includes $1,400 in direct checks to Americans, but the Senate is expected to strip out a provision increasing the federal minimum wage. The Senate parliamentar parliamentarian ruled against that part on Thursday. If the bill passes in the Senate, it would have to go back to the House for a separate vote before it would go to the president for his signature. The House's vote came just after 2 a.m. Eastern time today. The vote was 219 to 212, with two Democrats breaking ranks to vote against it and no Republicans voting in favor of it. Wisconsin GOP Congressman Brian Stiles says he voted against it because the bill includes $350 billion to bail out fiscally irresponsible states, and only a fraction of the total funding will go toward coronavirus relief. Democratic Congressman Mark Pocan voted in favor of this stimulus bill writing on Twitter that the bill is only a first step to helping the U.S. recover, saying, quote, a lot more left to do, let's do it. Nearly 700 more coronavirus cases have been confirmed around the state of Wisconsin over the past day. The seven-day average has dropped to 617 new cases. 13 more people have died. More than 15% of the state's population has received at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine, while nearly 470,000 people have finished their two-dose vaccination series. Some late-game heroics from Dimitri Trice nearly resulted in one of the biggest wins of the season for the Badgers. Sports director Zach Hanley joins us now to break down just how close Wisconsin came to pulling off the upset today against Illinois. Yeah, man, with three games left, Wisconsin still looking for that marquee win, and everybody knows how they fared against the top teams of the Big Ten. They're 0-5. Badgers trying to change all of that against the Illini today. Down 12 with two minutes and change to go. And Demetri Trice got hot. The senior put his team on his back, scoring 19 straight points for Wisconsin. That triple makes it a nine-point game. Now under 40 to play. Trice hits from deep again, and it's a three-point game. But UW would run out of time, and Illinois, they'd make their free throws. Badgers fall 74-69. to 69.
I'm really proud of that effort. And again, shout out to Meech because he carried us. So um, we got to keep that effort at the end of the game going to start the game. Um, and I think guys have experienced it. They've seen it. Um, and it's something that we can continue to carry on moving forward. I thought the fight and the effort was tremendous. And, you know, with as bad as things were going offensively, a lot of teams would just lay down and it would have been ugly, um, you know, in terms of your final score. And the Badgers, you know, they're going to have to figure it out soon because they've only got two games left in the regular season. Amanda? All right. Thanks so much, Zach. There's more to come on News 3 Now at 6. Nearly a year after the start of the pandemic, the Overture Center in downtown Madison is finding a way to still bring the community together to support the arts. And tonight on News 3 Now at 10, this year a winter tradition in northern Wisconsin is happening right here in Madison. How the annual Berkey is living on. That's tonight at 10. Steinhoffel's Best Brands Best Prices Sale. When all of the best brands are 35 to 50% off, Steinhoffel's has the largest selection of in-stock furniture and mattresses at the guaranteed lowest prices. And with Steinhoffel's special 60-month financing, your new room has never been more affordable. It's Steinhoffel's Best Brands Best Prices Sale, where you'll save big on all the best brands. Visit Steinhoffel's and Steinhoffel's.com. Monona Plumbing and Fire Protection, a name you can trust when service is a must. Monona Plumbing and Fire Protection is here 24 hours a day. Seven days a week for all your residential and commercial plumbing services. From installation, repairs, and maintenance to complete sewer and drain cleaning, we've got you covered. Visit MononaPFP.com. Monona Plumbing and Fire Protection, a name you can trust when service If your dry eye symptoms keep coming back, inflammation in your eye might be to blame. Looks like a great day for achy, burning eyes. Over-the-counter eye drops typically work by lubricating your eyes and may provide temporary relief. Ha! These drops probably won't touch me. Zydra works differently, targeting inflammation that can cause dry eye disease. What is that? Zydra? No! It can provide lasting relief. Oh. Zydra is the only FDA-approved treatment specifically for the signs and symptoms of dry eye disease. One drop in each eye, twice a day. Don't use if you're allergic to Zydra. Common side effects include eye irritation, discomfort, or blurred vision when applied to the eye, and unusual taste sensation. Don't touch container tip to your eye or any surface. After using Zydra, wait 15 minutes before reinserting contacts. Got any room in your eye? Talk to an eye doctor about twice daily Zydra. I prefer you did it. Zydra, not today, dry eye. Kiss. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. The Able Contemporary Gallery in Stoughton is finding creative ways to celebrate the opening of its new exhibit. The gallery held a virtual reception today with two of its newest artists. They're just a joy to make. And, um, you know, I, I see them as, uh, as a family grouping. They're, they're all, each component is, uh, is a member of the family. The exhibit is called Meticulous. Wisconsin-based artists Reed Schoonover and Sandra Byers crafted it through semi-functional ceramics. You can visit that exhibit in person Tuesdays through Sundays until April 11th and go back and watch today's reception on its website and Facebook page. Before the pandemic, the Overture Center's Saturday schedule was jam-packed with families enjoying the popular kids in the Rotunda series by day and couples taking in a show at night. While COVID has canceled most arts programming, the show will go on for the first time in a while this weekend. Christina Laurie explains. When the curtains closed Thursday, March 12, 2020. I was actually at that last show of Wicked. It was the day Broadway and the Overture went dark. It was really hard knowing that that was going to be the last thing for a long time. No one knew how long. The arts is where so many people turn for comfort and for expression. This weekend, the show will go on in Madison for the first time in nearly a year. It's the Overture's annual International Fest, a citywide celebration of countries, cultures, and coming together. That last part for now will happen at home. Right now, I mean, I think we're all learning through the pandemic just how important all of our 
family traditions are to all of us. Starting Saturday, families will be able to stream hundreds of cooking demos and musical performances, showcasing the traditions of people from more than 50 different countries who all call Dane County home. We have been on intermission and we're still technically in an intermission, but that doesn't mean that our work is stopped completely. Until the curtain rises once again, Christina Lori, News 3 Now. The Overture is planning to welcome in-person crowds with the return of its Broadway series this November. Coming up on News 3 Now at 6, it's International Polar Bear Day, how you can help the Henry Vilas Zoo take care of its two polar bears. Plus, temperatures in the 50s are in the 10-day forecast. Dana has details after the break. Get the ultimate deals on sleep made simple at Ashley Home Store's Ultimate Mattress Sale. Save as much as 70% off clearance and floor sample mattresses while they last. Shop early for best selection. They're going fast at Ashley Home Store. People were afraid I was contagious. I felt gross. It was kind of a shock after I started Cosentex. Four years clear. Real people with psoriasis look and feel better with Cosentex. Don't use if you're allergic to Cosentex. Before starting, get checked for tuberculosis. An increased risk of infections and lowered ability to fight them may occur. Tell your doctor about an infection or symptoms. If your inflammatory bowel disease symptoms develop or worsen, or if you've had a vaccine or plan to, serious allergic reactions may occur. Learn more at Cosentex.com. I grew up working in my family's supper clubs. This is where it started with us as far as the fish that we serve at Culver's today. We source the finest cod and batter each filet by hand and always cook it to order. That beautiful golden brown color and flaky on the inside. The fish fry is a Midwest tradition. It's about families coming together. I love bringing this tradition to guests everywhere. Mom and Dad would be proud. Welcome to Delicious. Madison Magazine's Restaurant Week is new and updated for 2021. Participating restaurants will provide a three-course menu at a special price for dining in at the restaurant or for takeout that you can enjoy at home. Dining with a choice. Don't miss Restaurant Week 2021, February 22nd through the 27th. Additional support provided by Wisconsin Beef Council and E&J Gala Winery. For Restaurant Week menus and details, visit madisonmagazine.com. Trend Truck of the Year three times in a row, that had never been done before. Then again, neither had a 12-inch touchscreen or a thousand pound-feet of torque, or being the only pickup on Car and Driver's 10 best list. Never been done before. It's just kind of our thing. During the Ram President's Day event, get 0% financing for 72 months, plus $3,750 total bonus cash on the 2021 Ram 1500. Get the ultimate style for the ultimate deal at Ashley Home Store's Ultimate Sale. Save big on everything in the store, including door busters up to 50% off. Plus, take bonus discounts off our sale prices online and in-store. And no interest financing for three years. Ashley Home Store. You are watching News 3 Now at 6. Welcome back. Today is National Polar Bear Day, and the Henry Vilas Zoo is celebrating by giving you a chance to help their bears. Right now, the Henry Vilas Zoo is home to two-year-old Bo and 22-year-old Barrett. They're raising money to make sure that they can take care of those two bears, along with showing support to all polar bears in the wild. If you make a donation of $25 or more on the zoo's website, you will receive a handmade Henry Vilas Zoo memory bear. There aren't very many polar bears left in the wild, so every cub matters a lot. Um, polar bears are currently facing a lot of problems with their sea ice, uh, loss of sea ice in the wild, um, and a lot of that is caused by climate change. And so making sure that we make choices that help our polar bears is a really important thing for us. So far, the zoo has sold 40 memory bears. You can donate to help polar bears at henryvilaszoo.gov. Let's get a look at your first warm weather with Dana Fulton. A little sunshine for those polar bears at the zoo. They did see some sunshine today. I'm sure they were a fan of the cooler temperatures that we had a few weeks ago. Overall, though, we are looking at some milder days ahead. Tonight, a little bit of freezing drizzle expected to develop toward morning. Some light rain mixed in with that through the early hours of your Sunday. Otherwise, temperatures will continue to trend above average for afternoon highs and overall for much of next week. We 
we should see quite a dry pattern for us. Our Doppler track is quiet right now. Nothing expected to move in in the next few hours. Skies will settle to become mostly cloudy overnight with temperatures dropping to the low 30s for overnight lows. So we'll drop just a little bit more. After midnight, the chance for that light drizzle or light freezing drizzle starts to build in, uh, mainly for areas north of Dane County early in the day. And then for the mid to late morning hours on Sunday, we do have that opportunity for some light rain to pass through. It's not going to be a big soaker event. Not a lot of rain expected to come in, but you'll likely feel a few raindrops early Sunday morning. That continues off to the east. And then in the afternoon, we're still mostly cloudy with high temperatures expected to land in the low 40s. So not too bad as far as temperatures for tomorrow. As we look ahead to early Monday morning, temperatures are in the teens overnight. And then afternoon highs will be just a smidge cooler for us. We'll be close to freezing for Monday afternoon. But as we look at that 6 to 10 day outlook, still very likely that our overall dry trend continues. Temperatures likely to trend above average all the way into the middle of March. So Monday seeing us close to 30. Uh, that'll be the coolest day. Otherwise, high temperatures again trending on the up. Cloudy tomorrow and windy outside with that chance for freezing drizzle or light rain early in the day. Our wind speeds about 15 to 25 miles per hour. So enough that you will uh, certainly notice it'll be a little windy outside. Sunshine expected for Monday and Tuesday. We're cooler outside for Monday. Highs will be near 40 on Tuesday and then we just hop up and stay up. Afternoon high temperatures in the upper 40s for Wednesday and Thursday with partly sunny skies, partly sunny on Friday and Saturday, and we'll stay partly sunny for Sunday and Monday to the following week with our next chance for a little bit of moisture expected to build in uh, by the middle of next week, Amanda, as we might have a chance for rain starting to develop for us. I know last weekend I was really excited to see those 40s there, but we see a 50 there now. We see 50, we excited. see a few 40s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyone who's hoping for spring, we're certainly building towards that. All right. Thank you so much, Dana. And just ahead in sports, the Badger men put on a show on the ice how Wisconsin made a statement and swept Ohio State in the process. Saxon next with sports. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Hey, there's a new cow in town, Wiscow. Crazy good pizza, wings, and custom-made mac and cheese from a new virtual kitchen and your friends at Monk's Barn Grill. For takeout or delivery, seven days a week. Order the goodness today at wiscowpizza.com. Love lower than low prices? Then get more ways to save at Pick and Save, where you can find personalized coupons, weekly deals, and rewards like fuel points. All for prices that are lower than low. On food that's fresher than fresh. Pick and Save. Fresh for everyone. Are your windows drafty, broken, or your energy bills on the rise? The Champion family is here to help you stay comfortable in your home all year long. Right now, buy two windows, get two free. Call now or download our free buyer's guide at getchampionwindows.com today. The most important thing in the Chevy Equinox is not forward collision alert or automatic emergency braking. No, the most important thing in the Equinox isn't any of the advanced safety features we've put into it. It's what you put into it. Chevy Safety Assist, standard on every 2021 Chevy Equinox. Get a $4,000 cash allowance on most 2021 Equinox models. Plus, current Chevy owners with an eligible GM credit card get an additional $1,750 total allowance. See your Badgerland Chevy dealer today. We drive everywhere to help our son reach his dream of becoming an elite swimmer. So we enrolled in the Know Your Drive program with American Family Insurance. It gives us discounts for safe driving, which comes in handy, no matter where his dreams take him. With Know Your Drive, save up to 20% and get closer to your dreams. American Family Insurance. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. Hey, there's a new cow in town, Wiscow. Crazy good pizza, wings, and custom-made mac and cheese from a new virtual kitchen and your friends at Monk's Barn Grill. For takeout or delivery, seven days a week. Order the goodness today at wiscowpizza.com. Hear what's new with the Madison Magazine and their upcoming fundraiser. Plus, Austin is tracking your Sunday morning forecast. Join us Sunday morning starting at 6.30.
Just to get to the state tournament, Verona had to beat Wanaki, the top seed in their region. Then they had to go on the road and beat Kettle Moraine and uh, yeah. uh, Prompter. Here we go. And Arrowhead in the sectional. So there's one thing we know about these Wildcats. Don't count them out. Sorry for that pause. Verona taking on Germantown in the Division I state semifinals. Tough start for the Wildcats as the Warhawks score the game's first 20 points. But they didn't quit. Abby Rupp now banks home the floater. But they just couldn't slow down Jalen Acker today. She hit seven threes, scoring a game-high 28. Verona's season comes to an end with a 76-57 loss. The last time Reedsburg was in the state tournament was in 2012. And the Beavers lost in the semifinals to, you guessed it, New Berlin Eisenhower, who they just so happened to play today in the Division II state semifinals. Reedsburg entered the game on a 14-game winning streak, and in the second half, they were rolling. Sydney Cherney drives in and gets the layup to fall for two of her 20 points. Beavers up 10 at that point, and their lead would grow. Later, they used the bounce to Mara Weeman, and she banks it home. Game high 22 from her as Reesberg moves on to the finals with a 67-48 win. High school boys hoops. The Forest taking on Arrowhead in Baraboo with a trip to state on the line. The Norskis got off to a great start. Brody Hardig stops and pops for two. DeForest takes an early lead. And then later, it's Nolan Hawk spotting up and splashing home three ball. DeForest trailed at the break, but came up clutch down the stretch. They're headed to state with a 77-69 win. Down in Division Two, Monroe t hosting Lake Mills in a sectional final. Cheesemakers down early, but flying back. Kate Meyer lays it up and in in transition to cut the lead to two. But the Elcats and Drew Stoddard always had an answer. The catch and shoot puts Lake Mills up five. They had to state with a 56-55 win. Last night, it was the Dylan Holloway show. The Badger forward tallied two goals, including the game winner in overtime to push Wisconsin past Ohio State in game one of their series. This afternoon, it was game two. Badgers looking for the sweep, and Cole Caulfield was dialed in. He goes backhand and flips it up and in to give UW a 1-0 lead. And the scoring was far from done. Caulfield had a hat trick. Ty Pelton Bice scored twice. And the Badgers sweep the Buckeyes 7 0 is your final. And the Badger women are WCHA regular season champs. Daryl Watts scored the game winning goal in overtime to lead Wisconsin over Minnesota Duluth. The postseason for them begins on March 6th. So it is a great day, great time to be a Badger hockey fan. Men's hockey team rolling and the women's yeah. hockey team is rolling too, Amanda. Making up for that basketball game. Yeah, Feel let's, a just, better let's about just not talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Zach. Dana, let's take one final look at weather. We are expecting a little bit of freezing drizzle or light rainfall early in the day. Windy outside with wind speeds getting into the mid-20s. Temperatures will be in the low 40s, and that's going to lead us into a cooler afternoon for Monday. But then we're back to the 40s for afternoon highs for the middle and end of the week. Overnight lows generally starting to trend closer to the mid to upper 20s. So milder days ahead for us as we look towards the end of that 10-day forecast. All right. Thanks, Dana, and thanks for joining us. Have a great night.